This is a video on using a normal distribution uh, to calculate probabilities and values. Uh, this is specifically geared for math studies, but it would apply to HL maths classes as well. So a quick question on the left, um, just read it through. So for these kinds of questions, we always want to draw a diagram to illustrate the situation. Uh, I have one just here, hopefully. You can grab it. There it is. So let's just see if that tallies. So the shape of the normal distribution. So this is a model for what the actual population might look like. And the area underneath this particular model matches the probabilities or the percentage of distribution spread between certain values. We always mark the mean as a measure of central tendency. There's 500. The mean lifetime is 500. I always like to put the units here. Look, I've made a mistake there. This is a lifetime in hours. This is actually days. Um, easily solved. Let's just go back in there. This is a lifetime in days. Okay, that should be all right. And the standard deviation, 61. This is your measure of spread. It's a measure of how the data is spread out away from the mean. And we are wanting to find out what percent of batteries have lifetimes longer than 561. So mark on your 561, and you want greater than 561. So it's all this area here. And it keeps going for a long way, because this curve actually just never quite touches the x-axis. But the actual area over here is very, very, very small. So basically, we want to work out that particular area, which corresponds to the probability, and also corresponds to the percentage of all things in the probability distribution that are in this area. So let's try it then. So for your calculator, some people like to use Scratchpad. I always like to use the main document area. So we want a calculation page and then we actually want to go through and find uh, the particular distribution. So it's menu. We're working out a probability. We're going to distributions and we're always going to use normal CDF. This is the cumulative distribution function. So this is when we add together probabilities. Uh, lower bound. Well, the lower bound here is 561. So just type that in. Now the upper bound. Here's where you can actually just choose any number as long as it's quite big. So here's 500. Maybe just double it. A thousand would be somewhere way over here. We'll just put a thousand up here. Uh, mu is the actual Greek symbol. And it represents the, the mean of the population, which we are told is 500. And this little guy, sigma here, another Greek letter, represents the standard deviation, which we are told is 61. And we just feed that in, and out comes 0 0.1586. If we take that answer, and we times it by 100, we get 15.87%. So we can say that 15.87% of all batteries in distribution you would expect to have a lifetime more than 561 days. Okay, so let's go down to the next question. Okay, as you read it through, it tells you a total number of students. Okay, so that's the population size. Let's write that down here. Okay, uh, the scores in the midterm exam are non distributed. The mean is 72.3, the standard deviation is 8.9. So let's grab that and just move it up a bit. How many students in the class can be expected to receive a score between 82 and 90? Well, let's just go and draw the diagram again. The mean 72.3, quite symmetrical, the hump is in the middle. Score is here, labelled on the axis. We mark 82 and 90 here. We mark sigma is 8.9. So we're going to find this area here. What percentage of all students would lie between 82 and 90? We go straight back to a calculator. And rather than going through the menu and all that nonsense, just press escape, escape to get back off. If you use your up arrows and press enter, you can bring down the norm CDF. You just have to go in there and overwrite and change some of the values. Of course, you can start again and go through the menu. It's not a problem. So the mean is 72.3. Standard 
standard deviation is 8.9 the lower is 82 and the upper is 90 that's quite an interesting little command here domain error and argument must be in the specified domain can you spot the mistake we made? in the original 561 represented the lower bound 1000 was the upper bound mean and standard deviation by just copying this down to here I've forgotten which particular order I should actually enter the data so I've made a mistake with the data entry here so if you're thinking you might make that mistake then maybe it's best to go menu probability distribution norm CDF now you're pretty sure you're not going to make a mistake with this because it's got all the prompts here so I'd probably go for this and stick with this so let's have a look again the question is lower bound is 82 here upper bound is 90 mean 72.3 standard deviation 8.9 okay and take that and times it by 100 so 11.45 percent so if we just write on here 11.45 percent of all students will score between 82 and 90. The question didn't ask us for what percentage of all students, it asked us for how many students. So 11.4% of all students will be between here and we've got 184 students. So all we really need to do is find 11.45 divided by 100 11.45 divided by 100, 11.45% of 184 students. And there's 21.068, which is interesting. It says express the answer to the nearest student. So we would say 21 students. Okay, so that's using the power of the calculator to crunch out these particular values. Don't forget these are only ever real estimates as this is a model for what would happen in real life. But if the question tells us that the data is normally distributed then we're quite entitled to use this model and allow the calculator to quickly work out the answers.